In this short tutorial, we'll talk about using WXFTP for networking. FTP or File Transfer Protocol is a network protocol for fast file upload and download. Nowadays is being used less and less, as most file transfers take place over HTTP, but still, useful data can be found over the network on some FTP servers. For example, one can download the complete list of US stocks from the official Nasdaq FTP server. There we can find two files, Nasdaq listed and other listed. The first one contains the list of stocks from the Nasdaq exchange, the other from Amex, NICE and the remaining exchanges. Let's create a program that downloads these files, parses them and combines the data into a single list, which we then display in a list view. We start with a baseline app with a single window and a status bar. Before we use any network-related classes, we need to add net to the wxwidgets components in our CMakeList file. Then we include the header for wxftp along with standard streams. Download data will be the method for connecting, downloading and parsing the data. We call this function in the constructor so that download starts when we run the app. In the method body, we create the WXFTP object, connect to the server and download the files. We change the directory to the correct one and then for each file, we get the input stream from WXFTP read from it in the loop and write to our output string stream. In case of errors, we display the error messages. And if we succeed, we dump the contents of both files to the console. At least for now. When we run the app, we see that the method downloads the files correctly and displays them in the raw format. Now let's parse this raw output and get the information we need. This format is called CSV, or comma separated values. In this case, there is a custom separator instead of the comma. To parse that, we will use the Rapid CSV library publicly available on GitHub. This is a single header library, so we add the contents of the Rapid CSV header to our project. Next, we include it in the main file and head to the download data method to implement parsing. We need to create the Rapid CSV document object, providing custom parameters so that the input is parsed correctly. Because the parsing process takes place in the constructor, we need only to iterate over the rows. For now, we simply display the parse stock symbol and name in the console. This happens in the main thread, meaning we block UI interactions for the whole time the download is in progress. This is a bad practice. It leads to programs being unresponsive when the files are large or the network is slow. What we need to do to fix this is to put the whole process in a background thread. We wrap the code in a lambda, create the thread and detach it. If you want to know more about how this works, I recommend my series on threading in WX widgets. Here's the problem. After running the app, we discover that our program crashes. As we can see in the console, the sockets, which are the underlying technology for the network transfers, need to be initialized in the main thread. Does this mean we can't use networking in the background thread? 
Well, that restriction wouldn't make much sense because, as I mentioned, we can't let the unpredictable network processing block our main thread. What we need to do is initialize the sockets in the main thread. A simple call to WX socket base initialize before the app starts should be enough. This time there is no crash. To make this 100% correct, we must ensure we don't touch the UI from the main thread. That's why we wrap the message box calls in the call afters. Let's finish by creating a list view and displaying the stocks there. First, we create a simple structure that models a single stock. The other component is the actual list view implemented as a simple virtual list control. If that's new to you, I recommend my list controls video where I discuss how this works. With this piece is ready, we connect everything in the main file. We add the list control using sizers to ensure it stretches correctly and maintains a minimum size. Again, this is explained in detail in my layouts video. We need a container to put our stock objects into. When parsing the CSV, we construct the stock object using the braces initialization and push it to the container. Before passing it to the list view, we sort it by the stock symbol. Finally, we use call after to update the list control, ensuring we don't do any UI operations on the background thread. And that's it for this tutorial. We successfully downloaded data from the FTP server, parsed it with a CSV parser, and displayed it in the list view. Now, there is one issue with this. You may not be aware, but our code does a lot of copying and could be made more efficient. In future tutorials, we will discuss how to do it and I will describe various thread synchronization methods. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss it and I will see you in the next one.